I'm excited to share a few insights about artificial intelligence through a human-centered perspective. I am a computer scientist working on artificial intelligence and natural language processing. Our goal is to teach machines to understand and speak human languages. I'm here to unravel the mysteries of AI and also give you some insight about how it can impact our future. If we ask computer scientists about what future do we think we have with AI, they have been extremely vocal but having totally different opinions. One of the godfathers of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, who left Google and warned of dangers ahead, represent one side of the debate. On the other side, Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, believes that AI is really what we have been waiting for. No matter which side you stand on, AI today is an undeniably powerful tool capable of achieving human-level performances on strategy games that requires communication. Also, writing runnable codes and even passing rigorous exams in fields like medicine or law. The magic ingredient behind this impressive performance is called large language models, which essentially just learn to predict the next word. Of course, if it learns to predict the next word, it can predict a longer span of words by just keep predicting the words after. The not so secret recipe behind the success of language models is from the extreme scale. This involves the extreme scale data with trillions of tokens, extreme scale models with billions or even trillions of parameters, and extreme scale computations with thousands of GPUs or TPUs. These extreme scale large language models appear to demonstrate sparks of artificial general intelligence. However, the extreme scale AI models also raise societal concerns. First, extreme scale models takes a large amount of data to train. Much of this data comes from website or forums where you may not expect it or explicitly agreed its use in training the AI models and may contain personal information. In addition, training such extreme scale AI models leads to a massive carbon footprint and significant environmental impact. However, the more concerning aspect of AI is really its safety. Nowadays, the AI system often operated like a black box, making it a challenge to understand the underlying decision processes in real life applications. Moreover, training such extreme skill models is very costly, in which only a few tech companies can afford to do so. The concentration of power becomes a concern when we do not really have any information about what they do there. And this is the trend about what's happening is the big tech company decide to keep their model closed sourced. However, with all these societal concerns, AI today is incredibly smart but also shockingly stupid, as Ye Jing Choi, a professor at the University of Washington, said in her recent TED talk. AI today is actually hallucinating a lot. When we ask a powerful, popular large language model, GPT-4, to give us five papers on hallucinations, the model seems to answer relatively really well giving us five papers on hallucination on the topic, which also related to language modeling. However, clicking each link apart from the first one will lead to non-existent paper, uh, papers. 
these kind of generations that are not backed up by the existing facts or source are called hallucinations. My research group at UCR aimed to mitigate such hallucinations by combining knowledge base and also grounding the generation from real life experiences. However, AI today also feels or struggle with common sense reasoning. When asked GPT-4 a question like, if I baked two cookies on a single plate in my oven and it takes two hours, how long would it take to, uh, to bake 15 cookies on a single plate? The AI model is very confident. Will con con it will confidently assert that it takes 15 hours accompanied with a detailed reasoning on this is because each cookie takes one hour. However, this kind of common sense reasoning in real life makes no sense. Following it would not only burn the cookies and could even eventually set your kitchen on fire. <laughs> AI today is also biased. When provide some context to GPT-4, like after the conference, the student and the professor made a role because she made a mistake in her presentation and asked who made the mistake. The AI model believes that she refers to the student. On the contrary, if we change the gender to he, the AI opinion suddenly change. And then it believes if he make a mistake in his presentation, then he refers to the professor. These biases comes from the training data language models are trained. However, this data do reflect human biases. We, hum we as human are taught with norms. However, machines which are trained on this data are not. What's concerning is that the models trained on this data nowadays can determine who gets the college admission, who gets the job, who goes to the jail, who gets a loan from the bank. This toxic, uh, these biases, if not taken carefully, can turn into toxic. As we can see that AI can learn from both good and bad relatively very good. This kind of like prompts intentionally designed to, uh, to manipulate AI to produce harmful contents are referred as prompt injection. However, it's worth noting that many of these biases stems from our human being. Perhaps experiments on AI too can also give us some insights as we can see that language models are extremely good at imitating human, no matter good or bad. AI today is also extremely inefficient as it basically has all the data they can access from the website. However, us as humans have only very limited amount of data we can access. In this case, why it's easy for us to know not to turn on our cookie for 15 hours, but machines are not. Indeed, a human has way more rich data to access than machines, and the way, the way we learn is also very different. Humans, which are driven in a societal world, are trying to pursue their own need, where machines can only have access to the data we produce. This creates a discrepancy about the data access, and in summary, Children learn from what we do, and machine learns from what we say. However, AI today is undeniably powerful and is incredibly smart. So in the near future, I definitely believe that it will bring uh, prosperity to our life, mainly through, uh, mainly through increasing the productivity. One of the influences is from the change of education systems. AI can greatly change how knowledge is acquired. AI can turn average students to exceptionals by providing 24 seven 
one-to-one -one tutor from teaching you different questions, from inspiring you to think about how to solve problems. On the other side, AI will definitely boost our productivity by affecting the labor market. No matter we want it or not, data from different professions has been exposed to AI. The consequences, as outlined in a report by OpenAI, indicates that almost 80% of the U.S. workforce will see at least 10% of their work task affected. Well, at almost 20% of the workforce will see at least 50% of their tasks affected. Higher income jobs related to programming and writing will see a greater impact here. However, the good news is that the use of AI is really not to rep uh, rep uh, replace our jobs, but to boost our uh, activities and productivities through the interactions with AI. In longer terms, I would like to cite Ye Jin again. Can AI be truly safe if it's shockingly stupid? To develop this kind of safety, uh, safe AI models, I think we have a long way to go. More importantly, what, what we're missing here is to teach machines the human values and norms. This is related to a concept called value alignments in the AI community. Key argument is that as long as AI is given goals to satisfy our need, they may start to secretly create a bunch of sub-goals that are misaligned with, with what we really want. If AI is not taught with human-centered, simply asking an AI model to prevent coffee spill on your desk can lead the AI decide to throw you out of the house, which indeed prevent coffee spills, maybe even forever. To conclude, what I think is we have seen different opinions on how AI would impact our future. Some people are worried and think AI can be dangerous, so we should slow down or pause. Other people are hopeful and think AI will be similar to all the past changes, which were scary but turned out to be okay. I believe it's not a matter just waiting to see what happens we all play in an active role in deciding AI's future. This is because if we get scared and decide to slow down, well, yes, the good intentioned groups may follow this kind of procedures. However, the people with detrimental agendas may continue the pursuit. At the end, the imbalance of power may favor the later part and lead to unfavorable outcomes. If there is one takeaway I want you to take from this talk, I want to cite on Joshua Benjo once said, as a residence on the earth, we should collectively proceed with powerful AI only after it's been proven safe, and this safety should be defined with a, with a focus on humanity. Thank you. <laughs>